Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a physics 7b torque practice problem balancing a seesaw. As usual, if you're finding our content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. It really means a lot. Now let's go ahead and read this problem. Feel free to pause the video so that you can copy the problem on your notebook. So in this situation we basically have a beam and the beam is balanced and it is stationary by this pivot. Um, so we basically have two other things going on. We have a box and then we have a person, a child. And we do have some masses and some distances to work with. And we basically need to figure out how far the person is from the pivot point and then draw an extended force diagram for the forces acting on the beam in the space provided. Uh, we don't need to be very precise with the lengths of the vector, but they should be, you know, more or less accurate. All right, so as you can see, I have everything here in my notes. I copied the problem and all of the information. So let's just go ahead and um, start solving this problem. So part A is basically figuring out this R, which is the length from the pivot point to the person. Now, uh, this problem states that the um, entire thing, the seesaw is stationary, which means that it is not moving and it is not rotating. So. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use the fact that it is not rotating, which means that its angular velocity is not changing, which also means uh, that its angular momentum is not changing. And because angular momentum is equal to net torque times delta t, the fact that this seesaw is not rotating basically means that if you add all of the torques that the seesaw is experiencing, they should be adding up to zero. Now, we need to figure, in order to uh, balance out the torques, we need to figure out how many torques do we have. So let's just go ahead and do that. This is a very basic uh, force diagram, the uh, extended force diagram, I'm sorry, that we're gonna work with. The pivot point is right here. I usually do stars. Now, um, how many forces do we have? Well, we have this box right here, so let's just go ahead and copy that. So this box has some weight to it, and because it has some weight to it, which is 50 kilograms, this box is putting a force on, the, on this beam seesaw thing, which I'm gonna call force by box. And this force by box is just the mass of the box times gravity, which is equal to 10, or I like using 10. So this is just going to be 500 Newtons. <coughs> now, we also have a person over here. So this person over here, uh, I'm just going to translate him here. He also has some weight to, his, to, to him, I'm sorry. So let's just go ahead and write another force vector. If I need to rescale my vectors at the end of this problem, I will. At this point, I don't really have a good sense of, um, well, this person is heavier, so his force vector should actually be greater than 500. So I can at least do that. So force by person is going to be equal to 800 Newtons. Now there is a third force because this entire thing, the beam, has a weight to it, which is 40 kilograms. So this is 400 newtons and we are going to go ahead and draw this at the center of mass of the beam, which is at the very center. There we go, it's a little bit before 500, so I'm happy with this. And I'm going to call this force by gravity. Four hundred newtons. There we go. Now, as you can see, these forces are not balanced, and they should be balanced because the fact that this beam is not rotating means that the net torque is equal to zero. But this entire uh, structure is also not moving in space. If this structure or this beam is not moving in space, that means that delta B is equal to zero. If delta B is equal to zero, that means that delta P is equal to zero because P is just equal to MB. But 
delta p or impulse is also equal to the net force times delta t. So if this thing is not moving in space, it also means that if you add all of the forces that the beam is experiencing, they should add up to zero. This means that I'm missing another force because three forces going down cannot possibly give me zero. They, they, adding this tree will just give me a very big arrow going down. So I need uh, another force, which is the force by pivot, and it should be a big force, which um, should be as big as this tree combined. Okay, I'm gonna have to cross this a little bit. There we go. And this is just going to be forced by pivot. And it should just be the addition of all of this. So 12, uh, 7, 100, 100. Newtons. There we go. Now, out of these four forces, how many of them are generating a torque? Well, out of these four forces, only three are generating a torque because the equation for torque is RF sine of an angle, and this force exerted on the pivot uh, doesn't have a moment arm. R is equal to zero. So we only have three forces out of four that are generating a torque. So let's just go ahead and write our equation. So this, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite. So this means that the torque due to the box plus the torque due to gravity plus the torque that the person is generating on the beam have to add up to zero. And now it's just a matter of substituting this equation over here. Now, as you can see, all of these R's and F's are exactly perpendicular to each other, which means that for every single force, my sine of 90 is going to be equal to, si uh, my sine of this angle is going to be equal to sine of 90, and sine of 90 is equal to one. So for this entire exercise, I'm not gonna be writing sine over and over and over again, but just know that this is only because all of these forces are perpendicular to each other. So let's just go ahead and do this. So torque due to the box, the magnitude is just equal to R2 box, which is four meters, times force, which is 500. Torque due to gravity is the distance uh, from the pivot point to the center of mass of the beam. So we have to go ahead and figure that out. So the entire length of the beam is exactly five meter, uh, 10 meters. And this distance is five meters. This distance we said four meters. So the distance from the pivot point to the center of gravity needs to be equal to one so that all of this add up to 10. So this is one meter times force of gravity, which is 400. Torque due to person is, um, oh, we actually don't know the, the distance. We need to find this. Person times force by person, which is 800. And this needs to add up to zero. At this point, please notice that I'm not writing plus or minus over here. And this is because um, I wanted to make a comment on this these torques are going in different directions. Uh, some of them are going into the page, some of them are going out of the page. When you're balancing torques, it is very important because your equation is never gonna tell you this. So it is very important that you make the conscious decision of, makes, of making some of this positive and some of this negative. Because if you forget this step, then three positive numbers are not gonna add up to zero. So you will be getting a wrong answer. Now, usually what we do, or the you know convention around the world, is that if a torque is going out of the page, that is a positive, uh, that has a positive sign, and if a torque is going into the page, that has a negative sign. So let's just go ahead and figure out the direction of these torques. So let's just start with torque by box, 
if we use our right hand rule, leave a like if you would like me to make a video of only the right hand rule, you'll see that this torque is going out of the page. So if I use my convention, and I do like just using the standard convention, this is a plus. Torque due to gravity, if you use your right hand rule, goes into the page, so this is negative, and torque due to person goes into the page, so this is also negative. And there we go. Now we have an equation that has some positive numbers, some negative numbers, so this equation will add up to zero and everything is going to be fine. So let's just go ahead and at this point the only thing that I have left is to find R person, so let me just go ahead and do that. So R by person is just equal to this quantity, so 4, 500 minus 1, 400 divided by 800. And let me just go ahead and figure this out. So this is 4, 500 minus 400. Oh, 4. divided by 800, so this is equal to 2, so r by person is equal, uh, so r by person is equal to 2 meters, final answer. Okay, so this was a somewhat simple a torque problem. At this point we're done with the problem because this is a complete extended force diagram. A complete extended force diagram has all of the forces acting on an object and all of the distances to all of the uh, forces acting on the problem. So I guess I just need to maybe just put a um, 2 over here. There we go. So at this point the extended force diagram is done. We have a final answer for part A and the entire problem is done. This was a somewhat easy problem on torque, but um, some things are very important to take over to the more difficult problems. Uh, these two things are very important. You do need to know when the sum of all forces is equal to zero and when the sum of all torques is equal to zero. Uh, you do need to know going into more difficult problems that some of your torques are going to be positive and some of your torques are going to be negative. Um, and you do need to be able to balance torques. So this is a very good initial problem. I highly recommend that you try it out. Uh, so if you like this content, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. It really helps a lot. And again, if you would like me to put out a tutorial on the right hand rule, please let me know in the comments. See ya.